identity design system, a tool that helps you understand different life roles. So, say this is me, but me that you see is only one aspect of me. For example, right now you don't see me as a father. Right. You don't see me as a husband. You don't see me as an athlete. There is different me's or I's, depending on the life role. For example, me as a husband, or in the case of women as wife. Me at work, this is what you see. Me as parents, parent of seven-year-old Adriana. Me as community member, me in free time. And maybe there's many other me's. If you take a look at these different me's, do you manage them well and accordingly, or do you sometimes mix them up? Example, for my partner, I should be a husband of my wife, but does and she should be my wife. This is what we agreed to. Can it, however, happen that instead of being my wife, she will become my mother? Yes, it can happen. Women nod their heads. Apparently, women know this model, that instead of being wives, they become mothers. There are certain logics to this. If they become mothers of their husbands, husbands can be husbands no more. Who do they become, in turn, if women become mothers? They become age regressed and they become their sons. Very interesting dynamic is being created, because now this man has two mothers. One is his biological mother, She's an authentic mother, and there's proof in his ID that she's his mother. Another one, psychologically, who is his wife, is also mother. Oh boy, competition between two mothers is created. Hence, jokes about mothers-in-law. <laughs> Apparently, all these women who play the roles of mothers, they hate their competition, which is mother-in-law. Obviously. If she was a wife, she wouldn't have to compete with his mother. How could possibly a horse compete with a dog? These are two different animals. How could a fork compete with a knife? Well, the fork is going to say, I'm better than you because I don't cut people. Right? You cannot compare two things which are of different category. Wife and mother don't compare. But if she plays a role of a mother, she will start competing and he will be confused which mother to follow, which will bring many different problems. So I've created a tool that is precisely a tool that is used to create your life's roles. It's very popular throughout the world. We never presented it on American soil because this is the first time we started, but more than 150,000 people have read it either in books or in my e-learning educational programs. And they love the fact that they can separate their roles. Another one. At work, we should be employees and bosses. Do you think it can happen that boss becomes mother or father for the employees? Yes. Of course it can happen. Do you think that it leads to independence of employees? No, it does not. Do you think it's easy to fire an employee whom you love as much as your son? No, of course not. It can bring the company down. Because people mix up roles constantly. And it's very interesting because sometimes, also when it comes to free time, we should manage our free time from a completely different perspective. In free time, as the name says it, we should be free. How many of you work in your free time? Sometimes you think, well, of course. So it's not free time, it's work, right? Or sometimes, depending on the culture, no one might say, okay, now I've got free time, I'll clean the house. It's not free time, it's work. Even worse, she will not be paid for this work. Because cleaning the house apparently doesn't pay off, unless it was Dubai. In Dubai, if a woman, she, if she takes care of household, she's paid by her husband. They've got a different model. In our cultures, it's different. We expect women to work at the house for free. Very interesting. Apparently, it's a cultural thing. So, if you look at it from this perspective, another aspect can be taken into consideration. Do you think that it might happen that parents, when they parent their children, 
she mothers and he fathers, that they don't update who their children are, and instead of referring and communicating and relating with a child who is, for example, at the stage of being an adult, they still treat their child as if the child was 15 or even 5. And it's constantly. For example, if someone comes back to their parents, they are 30 or 40 years old, mother looks and says, oh, Freddy, you are not eating enough. <laughs> Freddy is 40. He's a CEO, an athlete. Freddy manages a big company. But for his mother, Freddy will never be Fred. Freddy, when he hears that, he automatically goes into age regression. His knees turn inwards. His feet turn inwards. He is nervous. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. His voice stutters. When he talks to him, he says, no, no, mama, ma ma I'm not hungry. Eat your food, Freddy. Freddy is stressed, Freddy is stressed out. His wife, because she visited, sees Freddy, and she goes, whom did I marry? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Freddy is a disaster. And she sees Freddy in a role of son. Then she sees Freddy, who is very compliant, who agrees with his mother. The moment that they leave the place, as if you switched something in Freddy, Freddy becomes Fred. And she says, you know what you should do? And he says, you will not tell me what I should do. <laughs> Suddenly she goes, well, what's happening? Why is Freddy different for me and different for his mother? So she feels rejected. She goes, you always listen to your mother. He says, no, never. He's even not aware of what he's doing. So I decided to create a tool which helps you create your roles in life so that you separate them. Because when people mix them up, it becomes very, very problematic and it has many negative consequences. And we use this matrix to deal with it. What's the name of the role? Father. Where and when will I be a father? Only in companionship of my daughter. With whom do I relate? Only with my daughter. Definitely not with my employees. Definitely not with my friends. Can it happen that my friend, let's say she's 30 or 40, she goes, oh, I had a bad day. And me, instead of really helping her, I go into fatherhood saying, oh, poor dear, I'm so sorry. What would it reinforce? What would it reinforce if we do the, this? The daughter behavior of that employee. That's why I won't do it. That's why I will never do it. Because I don't want this person to be age regressed and to be supported from a <coughs> distorted mechanism that is called uh, learned helplessness. So it's an interesting thing if you look at it. Personality that they choose for being a father, outgoing, funny, uh, soft and masculine at the same time. What are my needs in this role? Depends on the age of my daughter. She's seven. So the needs are to educate her, to show her how the world operates, to teach her different languages. What are my goals? To help her become an ethical, intelligent, clever, good person. What kind of activities am I taking on? I am playing with her. I am teaching her. I am reading her books at night. Why would I decide to create myself as father? And this is an interesting aspect. I created the personality of father when my daughter was three, which informs you about something very interesting. I should have been a father when she was born. Well, physically I was. But of course, because I didn't create a model of a father, I repeated what my father, which is her grandfather, gave me. And I don't know about here, but in European cultures, especially Central Eastern European, cultures, the model of fatherhood is based on father being passive. If nothing bad happens, I'm absent. But if there's something happening, I step in. So when my daughter was three, my wife says, can you play with her for a while? And I started playing. And I noticed that after maybe five minutes into the, the game, she, my daughter, used the phrase that is the most gruesome, horrible, horrifying, terrible, and suicidal for every father. You know what the question, what the phrase is? I hate you. 
Oh, no, no, there's even much worse than that. Much worse. Where's mommy? That's the worst phrase you can have. The worst phrase. It shows pure rejection. It's pure evil. It means I'm not good enough. It means I didn't achieve what I wanted. It means she doesn't love me. She says, ah, that's the worst. I hate you. Keeps attention. But where's mommy is so indifferent. Broke my heart. So I decided I needed to do something with that, and then I asked myself a question, what kind of father am I? And I couldn't find an answer, because I didn't create myself as father. I simply copied cultural behaviors, and I copied my father. Even if someone is five years old, when we say he's not a father, that's not completely true. He models his father's behaviors. Therefore, he already has a model of father. So if you don't create yourselves as mothers or fathers, you will be fathers and mothers, in the same way that your parents brought you up. And this is very interesting because when I ask any student anywhere in the world, would you like to be the same as your father and mother for your own children? Always the answer is no. Always. Apparently we want to improve certain things. Well, you will need a matrix for that. And what kind of things did I decide to eliminate from my fatherhood? The model of a reactive father, of a financial provider, the one who only brings money, takes care of the child only when something bad is happening. Otherwise, he's absent. I didn't like that. I changed it. And I started enjoying my own model for fatherhood. Very interesting concept if you look at it this way.